Good morning, everyone. We're going to talk about lesson 1.2 today, introducing the magnetic spacecraft and specifically um, the, the scenario that we'll be dealing with, trying to solve. Uh, so we'll start with the warm up. We're going to be talking about magnetic fields. Okay. Uh, I'm going to start off getting your ideas about magnetic fields. So Answer these two questions. Do you think a magnet can cause something to move? And then what are the different ways that you might think a magnet can move an object? If you don't think a magnet can move something, then just in the second part say it can't. All right, this should only take about three minutes. Section two, uh, we're actually gonna skip. So you do not have to do section two. You are gonna be taking on the role as student physicists to determine why a spacecraft did not launch the way we uh, expected it to. So we're gonna watch a video to learn more about this. Um, and I specifically just want you to pay attention to what they're trying to do and what the problem is that's keeping them from doing it. The Universal Space Agency's Magnetic Launch Program hopes to one day use high-powered magnets to send spacecraft into Earth's orbit. Traditional rocket launchers give off pollution and can only be used once, while magnetic launchers would be environmentally clean and reusable. Magnetic launchers are years from being ready, but the team at the Universal Space Agency 
has constructed a model magnetic launcher to begin testing the idea at a small scale. This team has made an exciting step towards a technology that could lower the cost of space travel and make it more widely available. This video promoting our project was going to be released to the public today, but our latest round of tests was a disaster. Our small model needs to reach a launch speed of 100 meters per second, which if scaled up would be the perfect speed to enter Earth's orbit. But so far, we haven't gotten it to work. Could we get an extension? We did, but it's not long. LaToya, can we start with a report from the engineering team? Sure, Taylor. So during our first test on Monday, the model spacecraft only reached 80 meters per second. That's too slow. Right. And what about Tuesday's test launch? On Tuesday, we tried moving the magnets one centimeter closer together, which increased the launch speed to 90 meters per second, 10 meters per second faster. That was closer to our goal. But not fast enough. Correct. Finally, on Wednesday, we tried moving them another centimeter closer. And this is the strange part. We got 120 meters per second. So instead of increasing by 10 meters per second like we did on Tuesday, we increased by 30 meters per second? Exactly. We overshot our target speed of 100 meters per second, but we don't know why. OK, so we need to figure out why Wednesday's launch speed was 120 meters per second. The magnets were only one centimeter closer, but the speed jumped by 30 meters per second instead of just 10. Mateo, any thoughts from the physics team? Yes. I meant out loud. OK, I got it. So the issue is that by shortening the distance between the magnets for Wednesday's launch, we produced a bigger effect than expected. There are two possible explanations for this. One, something caused more energy to be added to the system than expected for Wednesday's launch. Or two, something caused the magnetic forces to become stronger than expected for Wednesday's launch. It's either one or the other. Actually, I think I see a third possibility. Isn't it possible that there was no change to the energy or magnetic force? Maybe we just didn't line the magnets up correctly the first two times, and then on Wednesday, we finally lined them up correctly and got the faster launch speed. That is possible. OK, good meeting. We now officially have three options to investigate. Drop everything else. I want this to be top priority. LaToya, Mateo, your teams work together on this and keep me informed as to your progress. OK, team. Let's make history. Okay, so the USA wants uh, the spacecraft to reach a target speed of 100 meters per second. So when we look, on Monday it was too slow. They were four centimeters apart between the magnets, 180 meters per second. On Tuesday, they moved uh, the magnets one centimeter closer and they got ten, uh, 10 meters per second faster. But then on Wednesday, when they moved it one centimeter, thinking that that would get them their uh, target speed of 100 meters per second, instead of increasing just 10 meters per second like it did the day before, it increased three, it increased three times that. 30 meters per second. So we're trying to figure out what happened. Why did this happen? Why did we go um, just increase that or decrease that distance by one centimeter, but increase the speed by 30 meters per second? What was different on Wednesday that wasn't there on Tuesday? And there's a, there's a few claims that we're gonna look at, okay? Claim number one, is that the magnets were misaligned on Tuesday. Something happened on Tuesday, and that's why we got really faulty results. Claim number two is that a lot more energy was in the system on Wednesday that wasn't there on Tuesday. Or claim number three, that the magnetic force was just stronger on Wednesday than it was on Tuesday. Okay, so one, magnets were misaligned on Tuesday. That gave us faulty results. Two, there was, for some reason, more energy in the launcher system on Wednesday than Tuesday, or claim three, the magnetic force itself was much stronger on Wednesday than on Tuesday, okay? So to answer this, we need to understand how magnets uh, move objects in different ways. 
so <clears throat> for question number one, I'm sorry, chapter number one, the question is how can the launcher make the model spacecraft move without touching it? We are not going to um, do the physical activities. We're just gonna go straight into the sim. So for section four, activity four, you're gonna use the sim uh, to help us observe some things that uh, we don't get to observe in real life. So you're gonna take some time, uh, play around with the sim. I'm gonna show you a short video on the sim and then um, we'll go ahead and move forward. This is the Magnetic Fields Sim. You'll use it to learn more about magnetic fields and forces. There are three stages, build, run, and analyze. In build, you can select different objects and drag them onto the screen. Once you've placed the objects, you can rotate them, pin them, or lock them in place. To rotate an object, press on either end and drag it around in an arc. You can also press on the arrows. Dragging a pin onto an object keeps the object in place while allowing it to rotate. You can also lock objects in place by dragging the lock to the center of the object. Press Run to observe how the objects move. In the top right, you can pause the sim or use the reset button to start over. To review the test, press Analyze. Use the key in the bottom left corner to identify the objects you've placed. You can use the blue scrubber bar or press the replay button to play back the action. If you make a mistake or want to start over, press build and then rebuild. Scientific models like this sim are useful for observing things that are normally difficult to investigate because they are invisible or hard to measure. So, how you felt this section, um, you put the magnets out there in the sim and you make observations about their activity. So you make some observations about the magnetic fields, make some observations um, about how they move, and we really just wanna find three, at least three um, different observations because we're gonna use those observations to try to come up with some rules about how magnets work. So uh, for this section, come up with at least three observations and then we're going to try to make some rules about magnets. They always do this or they never do this. So for, um, for the homework, that's what we're going to do. We're going to try to come up with some agreement about how they work. Some vocabulary words, attract, that means to pull objects towards one another. Repel means to push objects away. Uh, we do have a glossary, so we've we've got these words that you can access any time um, in Amplify, but we'll, we'll talk about them more in class. A key concept from this lesson is that a magnetic force can attract or repel an object at a distance. So we want to try to come up with some rules about magnets, and so for the homework, you're just going to go down and highlight whether you agree or disagree with each of these statements. Um, and then you'll go ahead and turn that in and you'll be done.